Hello everyone and welcome back to Cause Streams TV. This is it. This is the final episode of my weekly recaps for Dragonflight. Season 4, week 17. It's over. As of this reset and on Thursday we have the pre-release. Anyone who bought the Epic Edition will have early access to the War Within and can begin leveling. I am one of those people, but I am helping a friend move, so I'm kind of limited to being able to play until late. But I will get some time in there and I will get some footage for you guys. So what is there really to talk about at the end of Dragonflight? Usually we would go over our IO, we would go over gear upgrades, take a look at the dungeons we've done. In the background, there'd usually be clips playing of a dungeon or something exciting that I did this week. This week, we are just going to fly around the dragon isles and appreciate what this expansion was while we talk about some of the things we did actually do this week and i just want to recap what dragonflight was like and what i think of the expansion as a whole because honestly i think what dragonflight did was take a very bad end of an expansion that was shadowlands and really turn it around and bring players back into the game bring casuals back into the game give casuals more to do give those competitive players more to do even though season one and two are extremely Extremely frustrating due to the thundering affix and overtuning of the Dragonflight dungeons. Season 3 and 4 really brought it together, and I really think that Dragonflight is one of those things that really came together at the end. The raids were well done, even though Amirdrasil was very challenging, especially the last two bosses. The scale the difficulty scaling was significantly higher. It took my guild almost 600 pulls just to down Tintral to give you an idea, and then they weren't able to get Firak down, which we actually talk about in previous videos, so check those out. But I still think even from a casual perspective, there's so much to do in the open world blizzard really nailed it with activities and the one thing i truly enjoyed is none of it was mandatory you didn't have to do the campaign to unlock things and get items and progress you didn't have to go do world quests for reputation or any of that other stuff you can just play the game at your pace and do what you wanted to do in it so dragonflight succeeded for all players all around i truly did enjoy it i think i think back to the time when we had the world events coming out for each season first we started off with the community feast everyone would fly over to the Tuscar, we'd sit down, we'd go talk to the chef, we'd get our orders, and we'd start making the soup, the community feast that we all loved and enjoyed. And there was always so many people there. Like it was just a blast to see that event be so active. You'd take a look at Dragon's Bane Keep. That was one of the fastest world events ever. In my opinion, it took less than 10 minutes to get fr the frog to the base to set it up down into the cavern and kill the Bane boss. It took no time at all, but it was so much much fun seeing the community come together i remember flying into dragons and keep and there's just an army of people waiting to help siege the castle is what it felt like and it really was a cool experience same with when you were doing the super bloom the super bloom stayed active and relevant for so long because they tied in the two-handed legendary quest line into that where you had to do the super bloom to collect one of the items that you needed and i think that's why it stayed alive for so long but truly i enjoyed those events being able to go do them and see people actively engaging in these events it was really really cool to see those are one of the things that I think about and I think about fondly when I remember what Dragonflight was like. I really did like the raids. I thought they did a great job, even though some of the content was harder than it should have been, even though, you know, I didn't progress very far until the last season, I still did enjoy the opportunities that I got, how the bosses felt from a tank's perspective, I got to do them in a DPS perspective. All of that felt really, really good in my opinion. For me, the downside was Season 1 and 2 of Dragonflight in Mythic Plus, mainly because I was pugging the entire time. And when you're pugging, it's very difficult to push IO. So I wasn't able to, su to succeed where to reach the IO and the key levels that I wanted in those seasons, but I still did a lot of keys. And then in season three and four, I found some friends to play with and I've successfully reached over 3,200 in both of those seasons. And I want to take that into the war within. And I think every season has its ups and downs, things that are good, things that are bad, right? And of course, continue on when you get to the end of the expansion, the lull of those last few months. Season four is just a recap of everything that we've kind of done. You get the awakened and you get the new the repeat of all the dungeons but the thing that we got out of that is mop remix they basically gave us an entire new 
expansion, but an old one and refreshed it. And I really think that that's exactly what we needed in season four. I loved Mop Remix. I played Mop Remix so much. We got 15 new 70s out of that. And I just enjoyed playing it, watching my character get more powerful, just collecting bronze, getting the mounts, the transmogs. There was so much to acquire. I even got all the toys and I said, I don't really care about toys, but I got them anyway. All the class appearances, there was so much to collect. And then I just kept going back and getting stronger anyway, because it was so much fun. Using the mailbox trick to level, it, it was exactly what I think for the first half of the season four, that was that thing that you really can go in and just take your mind off it. The sweatiness of retail and go just enjoy blowing up old raids and old dungeons and watching your character progress. And it was one of those, one of those mo game modes that people actually jumped in and enjoyed and helped each other. It was nice to see mythic SOO runs bringing in carries. I actually was one of those carries that got brought to a heroic throne of thunder run on my DK. And I had no idea why I was there, but they brought me anyway to help. I died to every single boss, but they brought me, let me stay. They res me every time they made sure I was there. That was a totally different side of the community you see, especially with me, how much mythic plus I run. I see some of the most toxic players out there. So being able to see that other side of the community, it was refreshing. I think mop remix was a success and really what could they maybe do next? I would love to see any of the old expansions. Wrath of the Lich King would be great. Warlords of Draenor would be great. Legion, I think would be good, but there's so much like Legion is such a big area and there's so much to do and collect. Maybe they can hold off on that one, but who knows? Like there's, there's an opportunity there. I think that was the right move and the right thing to release with season four. Let's change gears a little bit and let's talk about what I did to kind of prepare for the war within. I do this every season when this comes up. I do this across all my characters. I go in and I start cleaning up my weak auras. I start removing all my quests, like abandoning quests you don't need, removing quest items in my bags. I start auctioning off any mats and materials, pots and files that I may have, feasts and food, uh, enchants, anything that's sitting around in my bank, in on my character i start disenchanting stuff if i'm an enchanter i do everything i can to make jumping into the war within as easy as possible and that way when i log in i can just go right into leveling with a fresh quest log with a fresh character with everything being new so i've been doing that across all of my characters and there's quite a few to go through so as i'm kind of jumping around going from character to character if i find quests or items that i don't really need i'll put them in the war bank and i'll grab them on a main and because that main's already sitting at the auction house i will start selling it on him so that's what i've been doing with all of my characters the other thing i still continue to take advantage of the world event that's happening with the radiant memories you then you just do the daily quest the daily quest to kill all three bosses then i take those memories and i started buying as much gear as i can using the radiant memories i think i had about 100k at one point and i took that 100k and i started buying alt gear for all of the alts we got from the event and for some of the alts that are coming over from mop remix i think we get 467 gear but i've got a war bank full of plate mail cloth weapons and the next trinkets and rings that i can send over to these alts as soon as they're moved over specifically my dk my dark iron dk that's gonna be my main going to the war within so I'm, I'm ready to do that and if we level more alts i've got 480 gear sitting there ready to go some of the other just end of expansion stuff i did because i just like playing the game i went on and i finally finished that pet quest where you got to go fly around all over the place to get squally to meet his friends so i got those three pets and then i also did the uh attire quest that you have to do you get the three different storm riders attire sets so i did those as well on my paladin so we got that out of the way i also believe that someone said i need to do the harbinger quest line so i'm going to finish that that this week as well to get that out of the way and then a couple more end of expansion things lulls um i was able to get in and run Nile mythic nylotha with a guildy we went in and actually ran it on two different characters so we did full clears on my monk and my dk there's no luck with the mount neither of us got it but we did collect a ton of transmog from that run so that was really cool um and then after that something that i completed one other thing I did on my monk, I've been hanging on to the strange goop from Shadowlands to get the Hyrocon mount from Xerath Mortis since the end of Shadowlands. I bought it on the auction house and it sat there for my bags this entire expansion. And I said, you know what? I've got the time. Let's go do the quest chain or get the items I need. So I did it. I went, it took, I don't know, maybe about like 30 minutes. We did it on a live stream the one day and went through collecting the three different items we need from all the zones. It took you to Valshara, the underwater zone. It took you back to Hoylfrang Reservoir in Zagramuch for Burning Crusade. And there was one other place I can't really remember, but regardless, you pick up the three items, you go back to the Baroness. She makes you the the lure and then i went to xerath mortis i actually in general told people that i'm going to be fishing up hierocons because anyone who actually attacks it gets a chance at the mount so i i fished up the rare i killed it and we got ourselves a brand new mount nothing fancy it's just a jellyfish with a giant ball inside of it and here it is basically just a recolor of the other mount you can get 
nothing fancy but hey we finally have it we've been sitting on this item in our bags for the entire expansion so there's a plus one to our mount collection and speaking of our mount collection we ran under rot and upgrad pinnacle far too many times we did under rot on all of our characters that we, that are level 70 and could do it so that was another 13 runs so we're about 310 if not more at this point and then we continue to upgrad pinnacle upgrad pinnacle because it's a heroic you can run it every day so i ran it at least every day on a couple characters but i know i did my whole 70 collection two or three times which actually takes a while still no mount so that's getting up there in pulls now so I'll I'll continue farming those this week and see how that goes and one other thing i want to mention is that i have been saying for months now that i'm going to release a tank tier list video and it would be for all of the raids in dragonflight and it would talk about what the bosses feel like from a tank's perspective well i finally did it. i took all weekend and i finished the vaults of incarnates i'll throw a link in the description and you'll see it at the top right of your screen now with an info card if you haven't checked that out yet go check it out this is my first time doing something like this so let me know what you think. Was it good? Was it bad? Could I have done something better? But I'm really glad with how it turned out. And I'm glad I finally got it done. It felt good doing it. So I think I'm going to try to do it a little more in the war within and to provide a little more information. Or maybe this time do some of the dungeons, do some of the raids. We'll see. Let me know what you guys think and if I should do more of them. And just a final recap. This is the end of a dragon flight. We are moving on to a new expansion, the, the World Soul Saga. And this is the first expansion in that saga. So I'm looking forward to experiencing something new it's always so fun getting back in and leveling and gearing and that process even though it could be tedious i don't mind it i enjoy it it feels like you're progressing again so i'm looking forward to that it's something new i will look back at shadowlands and say this expansion to me was a success i did enjoy it overall it had its frustrating moments but i think what blizzard has done the changes we have seen the growth world of warcraft has had it even with all the controversy that was happening happening behind the scenes i think dragonflight was a success and i truly enjoyed going from shadowlands to dragonflight so well done blizzard i clap for thee and with this being the end of our dragonflight recaps we're going to start a new playlist and a new series the war within weekly recaps may get a little more creative i don't know yet but that you should see that coming up those playlists will be created as of next week and we'll start making videos for that and that's really the plan we are going to be leveling and gearing in whatever way we can over this weekend and once we start the war within and that is the primary focus get your characters up to 80 and then go do whatever you can to get gear whether that's normals and heroics delves whatever i can jump into i really want to experience the expansion as much as i can and then on tuesday reset everyone gets access to it and we really get to go hard i'm hoping to definitely have my death knight at level 80 for sure before tuesday which really shouldn't be a problem i could pull a very late night and get it done i am helping a friend move so there may be some conflicts there but i'll figure that out and then i'm thinking maybe we'll do the mage maybe we'll do a mage as our alt dps class play arcane see how that feels but who knows once i get 180 and i see how challenging leveling is i'll determine what class i want to play next maybe i'll do another tank not really sure yet so that is the plan for this week week one i guess i guess it's not officially week one of the war with so we may do like a prequel to the war within video next week because officially next tuesday is the war within release and launch so stay tuned for that anyway i am a very excited and hyped for the war within i'm looking forward to all the changes the new content the delves the dungeons everything i i can't wait to jump in there this week and really see what blizzard has been cooking up for us to all of you that have been with me since i started this series sometime in season three thank you so much for watching for all of those who continue to subscribe thank you thank you thank you so much for subscribing and liking my videos i wish you guys the best going in the war within i hope your vaults will be plentiful i hope your experiences will be great and i hope you're not fighting the login boss on release day i'll see you guys in the war within peace out